I don't know. I don't even know who's still e-learning, but I guess some people are. Just kidding. I know a lot of people are, and y'all are crushing it out there. Um, okay, guys, settle down. Uh, what, Alora? Yes. Okay, guys, so this is important. There is a quiz tomorrow. That probably sounds really crazy to you, but everything I'm going to do today is to set you up for this quiz, so it's fine. It's just like a formality kind of so that we can be done with chapter 15 because all we actually took was that test on numbers, but there still is technically vocabulary this chapter. So uh, if y'all flip over the thing I just passed out, there are three lectiones on the bottom of that. We're going to start class today by going through those three sentences, and then uh, I'll pick one of them, and it'll show up again on the quiz tomorrow. I'll purposely make this like as simple as possible. I'll let the resources be flipped over so you have all of that. You'll translate that sentence, and then I'll just put five vocab words, which I'll show you in a second. We'll look at these in a second, but this is the actual vocab for the chapter outside of one through 20, which we already covered. Um, I don't know, maybe like one, what would it be? It would be one, it would be like 125-ish, I want to say. I'm not totally sure. But let me let me go back to the week real quick. So, uh, I'm going to give you all the lectiones. We're going to look at the vocab. So, basically, you'll be prepared in the first 10, 15 minutes of this class. And then we'll look at the rest of that story. Tomorrow, you will – I'll give you all time to, to study, like, five or ten minutes. Not ten, but like, five. And then you'll take it. You'll do great. And then we'll get Chapter 16 notes, and we'll start Chapter 16, which is really easy. So, you can start 16, finish it next week, and start 17 during our CMAS week. Um, the homework this week, I should actually type it up here, is chapter 16 stuff, so you can start today, but it might be kind of hard until you get notes tomorrow, but that is just going to be the, the first five exercises. So it's, I think it's split between 134 and 135. I'll type it right now. Sorry, it's kind of small on the board, but that's due Thursday, guys. So that's a different kind of week than what we usually do with our homework on Wednesday and a test on Thursday or Friday. What does it say? 134 or five? Thank you. 126. Look, I was close. Okay, to 35. Number one through five. So that's in the book, guys. There's no handout for it. And again, it's due Thursday. That's very weird. But it's not like it's due earlier than it usually is. So that doesn't give you any kind of excuse to be like, I thought it was never due. Um, it's due. It's just not due Wednesday. And so I will take a test tomorrow. Like I said, it's like almost a formality. Like still try and like listen today. So you absorb the information that's going to be on the test. Uh, but um, we just need to like be able to check off chapter 15 before moving on. And Friday we'll do Jeopardy and Among Us maybe. What else was I going to say? Okay, I think that's it. Ship of Theseus. We talked about the Ship of Theseus. People who are watching the recording, so you can just pause and think about it for five, four minutes. Um, sorry, guys. I don't know why he has the eight on his. I don't know, but yeah, at least it's actually a minotaur. I, I had that picture of like a centaur yesterday for some reason, so I apologize, guys. I'm always kind of rusty when I get back. Richard's about to get moved. Uh, it's like snowing. That's so weird. Is this kind of annoying? Yeah, yeah. Guys, stop talking unless you raise your hand. Please be welcome to share your thoughts. But a lot of y'all are like having conversations that are like truly a, an actual nightmare at uh, not even 8 a.m. in the morning. But uh, this is kind of weird because it's going to snow like a little more tonight, but it's not enough to like, we don't, I don't think we could even hope for a two hour delay. But that's fine. I mean, it's, it's just some of the last snows of the year of the winter. So anyway, at least that's an actual minotaur. I feel like as I went throughout the day, I, I had the details down a little better. I still don't have a good explanation for why Theseus' dad left him and his mom when he was young. Um, somebody brought up the cool detail that he might have used the spool, Devin, to like actually set it down on the ground of the labyrinth and it could roll down because part of his instructions were that if he just went down uh, and never took a left or a right, he would get to the minotaur, which makes me think it was a really simple labyrinth that like he just like literally walked kind of like down a slope into the center. So he used it to get to the minotaur and to, to get out in some verse. Um, I think was that the only one? Um, uh, King Minos hated hated Athens apparently because he sent his kid there to compete in a athletic competition and he got murdered by someone. No, and he so, Yeah, and that's that's one version or another version. There was like a war between 
Minos and the Minoans, the, the people on Crete and the Athenians. So we got all kind of different versions. It's it's crazy. Um, all right, I'm gonna break up the whole Caden zone so quickly today because y'all were annoying yesterday. So that's people behind Caden as well. I will, Kaylin, but I might have to do that to you as well. Who can read number one? Um, there's some good. Remember, it's not just numbers this chapter. There's also some weird ablative types. So it's kind of hard. Um, anybody uh, in Latin, please? One in Latin. We haven't tried Latin in Because y'all weren't reading Latin on the, the Zoom. We only did a couple of Zooms. So y'all haven't spoken any Latin in like three weeks. Uh, Aiden, thank you. Uh, this Oh, sorry. It's like aloe rot. Um, is there anything I can do to make it more visible? Is it like a glare or? Okay, sorry. It's like okay, I warned you guys about this place showing up as a subject, but that's what it is here. It's just like each each one or anyone is going to be the subject, so that's not too bad. But then, what's our verb, uh, Jake or Nathan? What do you think our verb is in this sentence? Or like, what's the first? First one we should focus on. Um, no, memoria. There is a verb similar to that that like literally means forever. But that here is just a noun that means what you think it would mean as, as a noun. Anyone out loud? What's the verb? Uh, all you wear on. Yeah, all you wear on. It's right where we think it would be, Nathan and Jake, at the end of the sentence. Uh, unless we had a compound sentence, it's it's not going to be in the middle. It doesn't look quite long enough to have like two different parts uh, because you could have like a verb towards the middle and then a comma, but it looks like it's just like kind of like a sentence with one part to it. So each one, this verb means to nourish, alo alara. It must be kind of new. I don't remember getting it. Um, alo alara alui. Okay, that's its third principal part. So what tense is it, Ava, Danny, or Soraya? Say it again. Very good. Okay, Ava, remember how this works. This is plural perfect, so it's not even like the normal perfect would just be aluit. Okay, but it looks like Ava knew that it was one of the perfects to begin with because it has the U there, which is showing up in the third principal part. A lot of second and third conjugation verbs, they, they have this happen where like a U comes out uh, or like shows up in, in the form of the third principal part, which is where we get the perfect, blue perfect, and the future perfect. Anyway, so it's not going to be just nourished, Ava, but it's going to be good. That's the important part, is that we use had for the blue perfect. So each one had nourished, and I guess I gave away the direct object. But it's the second word, and this is, I mean, this is super typical structure, right? Because our subject is the first thing showing up. As English speakers, we kind of want that verb at the end. And then, oh, look, what is the subject verbing? The direct object that's right next to the subject. Um, and say here it's that reflexive. What kind of pronoun, Devin? It's nope. It's a bad one, actually. No, I like I like these pronouns. Is this demonstrative, reflexive, or personal? You need to focus. Uh, no, it's reflexive. It, it, personal would be something like aum, a e u m, like him, like each one nurse him or her. This is that reflexive thing because it's themselves. I'm using them instead of like him or herself. Because we don't know the gender of this each one or any one. It could be anything. But yeah, that's what we should be say, say, right? That's what we use if we want a reflexive thing happening for a third person subject, like he, she, it, or they. Um, in this case, it's kind of like a they, because each one is under he or she. Uh, yeah, it's not personal, Devin, right? That's not, that's, those are the horrible ones, like is, a, a, id. Uh, at least they're horrible for third person. I, I like the personal pronouns for first and second. Um, ego, me, he, me, he, me, me, nos, 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 Etc. So anyway, it's gonna be each one had nourished themselves, and then what's and then what do we have left? It looks like maybe factorum bonorum go together, and anus just means like his or her. What a what case is memoria? Caden or um, you know John or Aiden? What case is memoria there? Hey. Yeah, look at that A, that long A. Look at A. Anyone? That would be Abby. 
it'd be ablative, right? Yeah. So guys, listen up. Eyes up here. Anytime you see a macron over an A, I think the only time that will happen for us, like now or even like in a year from now, if we're taking like Latin three, uh, is that it's ablative. It's first declension ablative. Uh, I guess it could, I guess there's some imperative verbs that end in a long A, so, so asterisk by what I just said. But anyway, so but what's it doing? It's an ablative just floating there. I don't see a preposition like I usually do with an ablative, like whom or sine or de or pro or sub or x or ob. I don't see any prepositions. So what kind of ablative does that make it, and how can we translate it? We don't want to say, and it means memory. That's all it means. You don't want to say each one had nourished themselves, comma, memory. While y'all think about this, let me do something I meant to do, which is like, let's like just lay eyes on these. I'm going to pick five of these words tomorrow, guys. It should be really easy, but you don't even want to let like one or two of them catch you off guard. Because if you like, if you get like four out of five points, that's already like, that's, like well, that's not good, right? That's like an 80 out of, that's an 80%. Um, but anyway, so you might get lucky and I'll pick Italia or even Memoria, which means memory, right? Those are like, those aren't even vocab words, but just learn English words with Latin ending. Uh, this one, though, is kind of weird. Tempestas. It can mean period of time or storm. I'll tell you now, we mostly see a storm, but I guess it could technically show up as an ablative of time when. Uh, what are y'all going to get that mixed up with? It's, it's awkward that it can mean a period of time. Oh, yeah, Tempest and Boris, which just literally means time. So that's kind of annoying, but this is, it'll probably be storm when you see it. Uh, kint, I guess they give us kintum for some reason, but I think I already know that means 100. What words do we get from kintum, anyone, out loud? Century. Century, 100 Sad. years. Cent, a hundredth of a dollar. Anyone else? Per cent means like by 100. Centimeter is 100 meters. No, I'm kidding. It's, uh, it's 100. Uh, and then we have melee, which is a thousand. I don't think, I might, actually, yeah, I might put kintum or melee. I'll probably put one of those. How about, yeah, how about that? Um, remember that melee is a thousand, not a million. A million means, you know, ten thousands, or a, I'm sorry, a, a, a whole bunch of thousands because it's it's from an Italian word. Anyway, it's kind of confusing. Miser is really easy. I, that might show up. It can literally mean miserable. So that's not one you're allowed to mix up. Inter is between or among. The internet is like a network that exists between, I don't know, internet modems. Yeah, modems and then bandwidth uh, all over the planet. Servers. Servers. Itakwe oh means and so. Okay, Itakwe is just like a super X. It's like a it's like a deluxe X. Um commito means to it can mean to a trust or it can literally mean to commit. So I always go easy on you guys. Like I could be sneaky and just put in trust, but I'd probably put commit, in which case you would not be allowed to get it wrong. I don't commit to anything. You're not allowed to get expecto wrong. Too easy. Iakio, I could see you getting wrong. I, I, I might put Iakio. Let's, how about I say I either put Iakio or Tanea? So Iakio is throw. That's really hard. We do get words like inject and eject from it, but that's only potentially helpful if you're thinking of the I as like a J, which you might not always do, but you probably should err on the side of doing that when you're looking at Latin. And then Tanea is to fear. Devin, let's have Devin move behind Carson right now. Um, Tanea means to fear, and we get the word timid. From it. Any questions, comments, concerns? Move right now, dude. You don't continue to talk. It's ridiculous. Um, guys, that never works. Telling your teacher you didn't do it or weren't talking, they literally don't care. And at that point, you're talking more. Uh, each one had nourished themselves. So what do we do? Each one had nourished themselves, comma, memory? Ava? Yeah, with the memory, had nourished themselves. It's kind of a weird sentence, so it's like almost harder to make that leap. In other senses, this is called the ablative of anyone? Means, good. Uh, it, it might be easier in other senses to understand that you're looking at. I, I said behind Carson, dude. I don't know what's up with y'all. Some of y'all decide to have a bad attitude with this. Each one had nourished themselves with the memory. So there is no coom in the sentence. We are adding that ourselves. Basically, out of the logic that we derive from noticing that there is no preposition. I don't think we paid enough attention to ablids up to this point, which is my fault, but they are always the objects of prepositions, these ablatives. Prepositions, what does that mean? It's words like in, under, with, um, without, stuff like that. Um, but there is nothing here. There's no cum sine sub, like I said. So that's when we can add with ourselves. 
Ava's right. Like, this is one of the ones we can add if there's no preposition. The other ones we can add are, like, in uh, or at, and that is with the outlet of time, like, at that time or in one hour. Anyway, and I guess I gave away the rest. Factorum, bonorum, and as are all genitives. So it's, like, the memory of good deeds, but it's not just anyone's good deeds. It's his or her good deeds. AS is always his or her, and you get to decide which one it is in most sentences. Sometimes they make it clear. Any questions about this one? All right, unfortunately, I might not. Well, I like this one because of the ablative of means. And I will ask about an ablative of means. Uh, a lot of people got that wrong on the last test, the one before the numbers. Or they didn't answer it at all, where I was like, is this an ablative of means manner or accompaniment? A lot of people left that blank, which is weird. Um, yeah, this one's mean, though. It's a mean one, right? It's mean in that it's like cruel because it's not giving us the coon. Who can read number two? Who can read number two? The number we are the cooperum, cooperum, et se cum alis copies in serum. Good, good. Okay, this one's kind of long. I'm sensing a lot of prepositional phrases. Speaking of the lack of prepositions in this sentence, now we have a whole bunch. Um, anti is the opposite of post. So anti means what, Kylie or Natalie? Yeah, it means before. Uh, so before the, what does sigma mean, Richard? It can be sign or signal. So it's pretty obvious, or like it's, a, it's one that's easy to remember. Uh, but like before the sign, uh, per vias, anyone? It's per vias. It's another prep phrase. Ella? Uh, per is through. Yeah, through. So I think might be life or it's not vita. Is it prime? Not vita or vitium. Nice. What is via vi, Ava? Yeah, path road away. So before the sign, through the roads, um, they ran. And uh, I should have made these purple up here. Because Kakur Ray Run, look at what uh, Nidoran is glossing for us here. Um, we have Kuro Kura Kukuri for run. I think I've got that in chapter 14 and we haven't seen it much. But like, I mean, look how noticeable it is when it uh, shifts into its third principal part perfect system mode. It like doubles up that, that CU syllable. It sounds like a, like a chicken noise. Um, Kukuri, sounds like Kakariko Village. All of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Um, but that is perfect tense, as I already made it clear with the purple tense. So they ran is good. You could say they have run, but that sounds pretty weird. Like, just sounds wrong to say that. But they ran is good before the sign, through the roads. I even gave away Urbis. Why did I rush through this? Through the roads of the city. Um, I think Urbis is in the next sentence. That is the genitive of herbs, Urbis. That means city. So if I say the dictionary entry is herbs herbis, that means herbis is the genitive. So of the city is perfect. Uh, any questions on that first part? And then what else did this they do? Because notice this is a drop subject. Last sentence, quizquay was the uh, subject. He's like right up front. Here we start with the prepositional phrase, and then as, like once we see the first verb is in the middle, that's when we realize it's a third person plural verb with a dropped subject. Which is they. Um, I should review that too. Okay. Uh, and uh, I think they are going to do something else. What's the second verb, Miss Dugan or Caitlin or Aurora, who are very focused right now? Uh, huh? Uh, no, Copa is like a noun. It, it can mean like abundance or troops, even soldiers. Uh, anybody? What's the verb? What's the second verb? The first verb is run. Yeah, young say run. Yeah, guys, it shouldn't uh, be rocket science too much. I've, our verbs are super flexible now in terms of like the way they can appear because now we're using the third principle part before we weren't. But you know, like this is what I was talking about with the first sentence where it is in two parts. The first verb comes right before a conjunction, and then there's a second verb. And sentences like this, one of two things is going to happen. The same subject is doing both verbs. And the subject might just show up in the first part, or never at all, or we're gonna switch subjects completely. I don't see like a new nominative, so it looks like they, like this drop third person plural, is still our subject. 
So they, what does it actually mean though? They join. join in present tense? It's a young say run. Join. Yeah, it has an X. So Neelius or Ella or Antonio, what tense is a young say runs there? It is perfect. Yeah, so both of these verbs are third person plural. Perfect. How do we know it's perfect? The X is kind of a giveaway for this one. A lot of third conj get the X showing up in the, the perfect system. And then it does have that pretty distinct E R U N T in there that we know and love. Um, and they joined, uh, and we had say show up in the, because I'm already, I just, I'm a Latin teacher, so I know I, I have muscle memory. But like, if that's my verb, I'm going to go right back up to where I left off, and that can maybe be my direct object. So if it's say, anyone other than Carson or Ava who have been answering some things, sorry, uh, what do what they join? Uh, or what, is, what do they join? They join, then you want to say, what did we translate say as last time? Yeah, themselves. Good. Yeah, at least a couple people said it. Yeah, we had say in the last sentence too, right, Caitlin? So they joined, they joined themselves, reflexive, once again, just like in the last sentence, it's a reflexive pronoun being the direct object. Each one uh, nourished themselves, had nourished. Uh, each one, or they, joined themselves. Whom Ali is copy anyone? Ali just means other. Or with, with the other, the other copies. Not quite bodies, supplies or troops. What else? And troops. Yeah, I'd say troops is better. Maybe it's been a while. We're, we're rusty. Come back from the break. Some of you are like, "What's copy again? What does that mean?" Um, but yeah, and this I gave it away. It's an ad lib of accompaniment. That's not one. It's not like means where you have to know this like special. Uh, like button input on the PS2 controller to like do a, a kick flip. Um, Cause like you would translate this this way regardless of the fact, like if, if you knew this album of company or not. But yeah, that's what we call it when who has an object that describes people and troops are people. They really are. That's why we need to translate it as troops and not people. Cause then it can't be an album of accompaniment. If I pick this one, I just don't know. I would ask about the tense of the verb. They're both perfect tense, right? And then look, the verb, and this one's pluperfect. Pluperfect for the one in number one. Perfect for the ones in number two. I forgot to make the second one perfect. And the English one perfect. Um, last one. Oh, my gosh. I like this one a lot, guys. Who wants to read number three? It's, like, really snowing, but it's all alive. It's just superficial. It's, like, so we can see it, and we're not going to get any time off from school for it. Uh, Aiden, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. For two days. Good. Thank you. Um, ex adolus skintibus. Who can translate that just kind of quickly? Kintum ex adalus skintibus. A hundred of the young. That's my A hundred of the what? Of the young. Um, yeah, of the young. I guess young is okay for us now. Or like the youths. The youths. A um, hundred of the youths. Good. Good. So this is probably the most typical way to translate it. You can even get away with just saying a hundred youths. Okay, there is a word for this. Miss Dugan or Caitlin, rather, uh, it's called an ablative with a cardinal number, but I don't need y'all to know that because that's such a weird, it's such an uncreative, and it doesn't. You would probably translate it this way anyway. I guess worst case scenario, you translate this as like a hundred from out of the youth, because we can't have translated X is from out of in the past, but that's just clunky. And like, hopefully, you would maybe end up with that and then be like, oh, that's that sounds weird in English. Let's just say a hundred of the youth and just translate X as of. But yeah, you often have a number, then the preposition X, then an ablative, and that's what this is. But anyway, it looks like 100. The actual word 100 is going to be our subject. Um, 100 of the use, you skip this. That looks prepositional. Skip this. Um, interesting. Look at this. Interesting. Um, Jake and Nathan and Caden, what person is steterunt? Because that's my verb. I can already tell. Is it first, second, or third person? It is third, is it singular or plural, Jake or Nathan? Nathan. Is this third person singular or plural? Um, 
No, it's NT, so it's plural. So, Jake, does that mean the subject is I, you, it, we, y'all, or they? Good, yeah, it's they, like it would be they if we don't have any nominative plural, but numbers can function as any kind of noun that they, like, that they want to. And so 100 is our subject, that's our they. Uh, and Cedarons is from Stowe Star, a steady, another word with a pretty weird uh, third control part for the what tense is it anyone out loud? Obviously it's coming from the third control part, it's perfect. So it's like 100 of the youths, not stand, but... Stood. Have, uh, stood or the half stood's good too. The half stood's actually great. Under the youth stood, and now let's go back up here. Anti portum, where do they stand? Anyone out loud? In front of the door. Yeah, and uh, door's okay for porta, but Janice is more like door. What's a, what's a little better for porta? Front of the. So you know, it starts with a G. Entrance. Yeah, gate or entrance is a little better. Before the gate, cum vertuta. John, what's cum vertuta? Huh? I think you said it. Just... With virtue. With virtue. Where's your paper, dog? You should be taking like. Oh, oh, okay. Um, because I want y'all to like be able to look at this tomorrow, before, like before the test. Like, I'll give y'all five minutes to just kind of look at these over and look over the vocab. So. I know, but I'll, I'll give. I'll still give y'all time. Like, it, it'll be good. Like, these aren't bad. And guess what? I'm gonna like, pick this one because the other two don't have numbers in them. Uh, anyway, a hundred of the youths. Stood before the door or the gate. See you when I did it with virtue. With virtue, but and then we have a second part. Something about destruction. We haven't seen this word in a long time. But if I go down here, oh my gosh, it's that crazy possum. Um, what tense is this possum? It's not going to just be can. It's not going to be a hundred soldiers can present tense. Uh, you think it's just perfect? Yeah, Aaron. Yeah, it's just perfect again. So don't get too thrown off. I mean, if anything, you might get thrown off on that. This even if. It is possum, but possum's a verb dictionary entry is possum plus a patui. So when it's in that perfect system, it, it gets that like you going up the I. So it, it's just gonna be like could or has been able. I guess has been able is the most perfect it can be. But that sounds a little long uh honestly. But anyway, um and but said, but they could or have been able, oh not have been able, it's non vitare. Vitare means to avoid. So if they have what? Anyone? Yeah, not been able to avoid. So that's kind of weird. It's like I'm applying non to tatueras. Because if I try to do it to Vitare, I'd be like, have been able to not avoid. That sounds weird. So we need non to happen like really quickly. They have not been able, or they could not avoid the destruction. Uh, and then Urbis. Okay, so Carson already knows how to take Urbis. For what case is Urbis to be clear, Soraya or Danny? What is Urbis here? Yeah, it's from herbs. Herbis. Well, so if we say this, it's from the word herbs, herbis. And this is herbis. So if it's dictionary entry is herbs, herbis, that means the nominative is herbs. And herbis is the, anyone? The genitive. So it, that's why it's the destruction of the city. Well, why did I not click through until just then? Oh, yeah. So that's this one. All I ask about for this one, the verbs are perfect tense. It's kind of easy because I honestly, I think flu perfect at this point it feels kind of hard. Or even just like good old future sometimes still feels hard for third and fourth conjugation. But perfect, we should be getting used. And that's not just because I've been putting it in the corner of the board for weeks, which is probably not that effective. Honestly. What else would I ask about? I don't know. I guess the tense of the verb. Um, so I will ask this actually. Do I say what? Can, this is not an ablative of means because cum is there, but virtue is not a person, so it's not accompaniment. So can anybody remember the word for our third ablative type? We actually have four technically, but this is not an ablative of time when. Means manner. Oh wait, you said it. So this one is yeah. This one's man. Oh, okay. I thought I had it on the next thing. This one's manner, and I'm going to add it to the slide, so now I can expect y'all to answer it on a test. That if I'm like, is this ablative of means, manner, time when, uh, accompaniment, or with the cardinal number, you'll say it's an ablative of manner, because it has manners. It didn't, like, keep the, withhold the coom from us. It was like, yeah, you can have the preposition. We're not going to hide it. We're not going to make you, like, imagine the preposition. Which is what the mean old ablative of means does. So yeah, we do have five out of 
uh, ablatives. I'm not never going to care about this ablative, the ablative with the cardinal number. But ablative of time win, the fourth one that we got, that is going to be something worth knowing. All right, guys, didn't we do this one? It's the wrong picture. But the tiny, yeah, that's a tiny centaur. For some reason, my weekend's spring break brain was like, oh, that's centaur. a minotaur. Yeah. <laughs> centaur equals minotaur. No. <laughs> So, did anybody remember, what was the, who can rattle the sentence off? This was the first one. So now we're going we're going to look at the story for the last ten minutes of class. So flip back up to the story, um, and who can kind of spot translate or just recite what we did with this? Ella, thank you. Uh, Theseus lived in Athens Good. with his father, King uh, Aegeus. Yeah, Aegeus and Aegeus. I don't. I'm not. I guess we would do the soft G there, but good. Um, good. I, I think you said with. There isn't quite a coom, like another company. It's more just like and, because it's A.S. Quet and his father, father, King of Jesus. Good. Good. Athens should technically be green, but that's an absolute of a place there. They didn't even put the N in there. But if you're looking at like a noun that describes a place and it's in the ablative, you can just add in your second. So try to get comfortable with that in Latin, where like sometimes ablatives, they're just there, and you just kind of figure out what to do with them um, based on common sense. All right, Miss Fisher, can you? Can we do this one? Okay. Um, Miss Fisher, can you read the second sentence while I keep it on this slide? You can't read it. No. Why? No. You forgot how to read over the break. Yeah, sure did. Oh no. Oh no. Guys, y'all are literate. Believe it or not, y'all are truly literate. Whether you want it to, to be true or not. Um, which is more than a lot of people can say. What are y'all, 12? That's like nothing. Y'all can all read. Alright, whether you're nine or you're seventeen. Don't forget, it's technically impressive you learned to read. Like, um, okay, <laughs> we're setting the bar real low here. Okay, I'll read it. Illo, tempora, kiwes, regi, insulae, kratai, koinas, dabat. We did this one too. It has that annoying thing where they have to pay penalties. So at that time, uh, citizens... Oh, I need to fix this. Citizens paid penalties to the king of the island of Crete. Sorry, I need to fix both of these. Paid kings. Why would kings pay king penalties? They wouldn't. Unless it's like a war or something. Yeah, and in some versions, this is the result of a war. Refocus, guys, for our last stretch. Oh, uh, doing good. But, yeah, this is what was happening, is that Athens was like, it was a blood tax, basically, where they were sending these 14 youths to, um, to Crete. This is crazy how this gets worse. Like, why did the eighth graders, when they put, they, they stack the chairs, they, like, slam them under the wall. And now there's all these, like, crazy, I guess if we still have that same color of paint, we can just, like, go over it. But anyway, um, I might have said yesterday that they did it every year. Uh, it was actually more like every seven or eight, depending on the, the version. I mean, so it's not really bad. It's like every generation, you're losing almost like 30 kids. Because a generation, it's almost like 20 years or more. But anyway, um, yeah, this is what they were doing. Okay, and now they tell us what the tax is. And we didn't get to this, did we? Okay. Septum, so listen to this. Try to translate it as I read through it. Septim, Pueros, Richard, et Yundin, that horrible word that means the same. Numerum, Puellarum, ad eum, mitavon. So, okay, what is the subject of this sentence? Ava? 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 This is kind of confusing. What is, what's the very first noun phrase you see, Ava? You can translate it. Yeah, so seven boys is the first noun phrase we're seeing. But that doesn't look to be nominative. That's probably more like what case. Uh, and you can't tell about the acceptum, Ava, but Pueros is accusing. So that's a direct topic. So we're going to come back to that. Something is going to verb seven boys and the same numerum, anyone? The same 
yeah, uh, numerum coelorum, number of, of pump. Yeah, of girls, of girls. Yeah, and the same number of girls, that's a direct object. Seven boys and the same number of girls. So that we, that's what I just said. It's 14 kids total every like seven-ish years. Uh, let's come back to add AM, and then I see... Time to sacrifice people's children to another country. Yeah, right, which is like a thing. Uh, it happens a lot, actually. So, so um, but I see add AM. Let's come back to add AM, but Metabon. What about Metabon? That's from a word that means to send. And let me ask the same kids I asked earlier, but I'll add the student, Caitlin and Laura. But Kate and Jake and Nathan again. Look at Mitavon, because that's my verb. I, I know my direct object is seven boys and the same number of girls, but I don't know what the subject actually is. The verb will tell. So Mitavon is what person and number? Any of you people? Third. So the subject might be not seven boys. That's the direct object. Is it I, you, it, we, all are they? Yeah, it looks like it's a drop subject again, just like that last sentence we looked at. So all we can really do is use they. We don't have a nominative plural otherwise. So it's they. And the last question for that corner, what tense is the table on? Is it present, perfect, past. future? And it's one of the past, but we have three past tenses. So the imperfect. Answer. I'm asking Nathan technically, Danny might know. Is it imperfect, perfect, or blue perfect? Danny? Okay. Imperfect. Yeah, because maybe Danny sees that B-A. Remember, guys, the first past tense we got had the B-A, and then it's imperfect. That means incomplete. So sometimes we use, like, was and were, verbing to translate it, versus the new tango perfect, right? I definitely don't see any of these endings showing up here, right? Caitlin or Nathan, specifically, I guess. So it's not perfect. It's not the new perfect. Plus, Mitchell, Mitra, I think, Nisi, but he's turned into, like, an S in when it's in the perfect system. And it's not blue person either, it doesn't have here. So anyway, but we can still use sense or were sending. So they, they sent or were sending seven boys and the same number of girls ad AM. No, it's 14, right? Uh, ad AM to Yeah, I guess I guess can. Because I guess they're talking about minnows. Um because Krita is feminine. So if they if they said something else like her, we could say it. Or like to them, like to sending it to Crete. Okay, a uh, high quatuar decim victimi. Oh my gosh, that's actually not that hard. Richard just did the math equation that, that leads to this. So, yeah, it told us seven boys and the same number of girls. And now we see high quatuar decim victimi. So what does that translate to anyone? These are those. What is high, anyone? That would be this. These are those. Uh, no, those will be from Illa. Those are the plural of this. that. So this is these. Hey, Kai Kok is this and these. Illa is that and those. So these, quatuor decim. Um, four, 14, thank you, Devin. 14 victimine? Boy, uh, victims. victims. Yeah, these 14 victims. Thank you, somebody. Victims, something about a Minotauro, but I feel like I'm not ready for him yet. So these 14 victims were given. Um, well, I don't know. Uh, we're given? We don't have uh, gave. So Carson sees this, and it's just making gave. I'm about to move Caden. Caden, buddy, it's so cool when you sit up front. It really helps out people like Nick when you take on the focus. So um, it should, that should be your responsibility, but y'all all end up partaking in the distracting one another. These 14 victims gave is perfect for Davant, because that is – uh, who did I last ask? I think it was it Nathan or Caitlin. What tense is da bont? Yeah, it was Nathan. It, it, it's a past tense. It's imperfect, back in the day, imperfect, newfangled, perfect, or blue perfect. Miss Fisher, what tense? Imperfect, perfect, or blue? Y'all need to know what that BA means. It means BA. Huh? It means BA. Okay. Imperfect. No. I told you. Yeah. I said that. Okay, well, I can't hear. This is the mask thing. Like, sometimes if somebody says something quiet, yeah, it can be yeah. not. Uh, BA, back in the day, imperfect. I don't know how you can link those words and that ending in your mind and how to translate it, but you need to. Since chapter five, you needed to. All right, these 14 victims gave. What did they gave? 
they didn't give a minotaur. Well, maybe they gave a minotaur or something. They gave maybe like two of the minotaur. Their life. Two minotaur. Their life. Not themselves. Suwas Their own lives. Their own lives. That's just happened. Why did you get distracted? No, uh, refocus. Yeah, we got three minutes. Maybe I'll not want to let you know what's up. Well, that's how. Tomorrow's gonna be chill, y'all. You're gonna come in, study for five minutes, take an easy test for 15. Then I'll give y'all like a chill, very small amount of notes for chapter 16. And then I'll let you work on it. But, but we need to get through like another sentence or two. So these 14 victims gave their own lives. That sua 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 is that reflexive possessive adjective that means like his, her, or its own. In this case, we gotta use there because it's dudes and ladies. Richard, chill out. Um, you need to focus on the sweet Latin up here on the board. <laughs> Gave their own life. Um, what does it mean? Latin. I think it's pretty sweet. No, for real though. Um, stop. In that corner, in that corner. Why is it the corners? Do y'all sit in the corners in your other classes? Do like, you the same kids in the back corners? No. Guys, stay out of back corners. If you want to go to college, like, stay out of back corners. Like, that's where kids, like, like they never go to college. It's true. It, there's a study. Um, okay, well, like you need money to live, and college will help you get money. Um, college takes your money. Okay, they take your money so that you can then produce your own money for the rest of your life. Well, college jobs. Produce- there are other options. You can go. You can go to a, a coding boot camp where you learn how, like, a, a computer language, and you can actually make like really good money. And not go to college at all. I'm not promoting that. You, that has to be your plan. If you want to do that, uh, do it. Like, learn a computer language. You'll, like, make... Yes, you could also go to college to learn coding. So you don't, like, have to. Yeah, there's, there's plenty of different languages. Okay, refocus, guys. Refocus. Why did y'all start talking at once? It's really weird when that happens. Um, uh, okay, oh, here's an indirect object. Okay, he could have been ablative, but he's not an ablative of means. They're giving their direct object lives to him. So you can avoid it without needing the two, but you often might need that preposition to to successfully kind of communicate that this be an indirect object. All right. Um, okay, so now Theseus is going to say something to his dad. So I just gave it away. Theseus, eyes up here, guys. Sometimes I just said it. Theseus said... Perfect tense from Biko Dikra to his own dad. That's dated, indirect object. He said to his own dad, and now the thing's in the way a little bit. But this is just from Hikai Kak. So, what's the verb? Oh, non possum. What does non possum mean, guys? Uh, is not able. Close. What person is possum? Yeah, it's first singular. So that means who can or cannot do something? I can't do it. So Theseus is talking to his own dad. He says, I cannot, non pasu I cannot tolerate anyone. I cannot tolerate. I cannot tolerate. Punk Malim Morim. He's bad. Close. Not quite these. It's actually singular. This is bad. Bad. And it's not mortem, not death, but it's from most Morris, which we get the word moral from. Uh, bad deeds. Not deeds, it's close. No, most Morris is like custom or habit. I think custom is perfect here. So I cannot tolerate this evil custom. He's like, Dad, now that I'm back in your life, um, living in Athens again, and your evil um, stepwife uh, wife, Medea, is gone. Uh, I need to take care of this evil custom that I cannot tolerate. He did. He didn't kill her. Medea technically flew off on a dragon. But Ego Ipsa. What is Ego Ipsa? Anyone? Richard, dude. I myself. Matt, let's see. What, what do we get? Like, it's, it's a funny word that why did I know dead in? If y'all are just going to keep talking to the whole class. So it's two minutes to the bell. You're not talking. Well, then I literally need to, like, check myself into a hospital because I hallucinate and also. Even with the mask, I can still tell y'all are communicating with each other. Like body language involved. Um. Anyway, um, guys, stop, stop doing it. Stop claiming that you're not talking when your teachers are talking. It's just like it doesn't. I would love, I would love that scene where a teacher's like, "Wait, oh, you're not? Oh my bad. I'm like, I really messed up. I didn't mean to to call you out false. Like sometimes you're confused, but 
then it's your friend's fault. That's why people like it's like if you're not the one talking, then that means you should be mad at your friend. Like you should like literally take your friend aside and be like, stop talking at me in class because it got yeah, me in trouble. Stop talking. Yeah, stop talking. Right? Y'all need to have those discussions. Y'all need to have those discussions, but not right now. Guys, what is ego? Uh, I myself. I myself. Thank you. We have an intensive pronoun. I myself. Non Tomeo Minotaur. I'm not afraid of the Minotaur. Yeah, I am not afraid or do not fear. Either way, either way is perfect for Tomeo. This is a new verb, guys. I'll probably put it on the test tomorrow. It means to fear. So non Tomeo is like, in this case, does not fear works. Huh? I do not fear the Minotaur. Fear Minotaur is a direct object. We saw him as an indirect object earlier, like giving their life to. Um, and this is first person singular future. Of a verb that means not to come, but to come upon. Okay, fine. So it's first person. It's who? I. I will find that man. And if I future tense of possum, not if I present tense can. Can. Make it future tense. If I will. If I will be able to, I will. Miko Mikra to. I will conquer. Him, something about my strength, but it's just floating there. I live a means with my own strength. This looks like men, but it's actually strength. Uh, Richard, I'm sorry, you can't sit next to Miss Fisher tomorrow. It's just straight up annoying. It's like so annoying. Um, that is another ablative of means, guys. All right, I'll give you like six or seven minutes tomorrow to look over the sentences and the vocab that is happening tomorrow. Is Angie here? Is Angie or Genevieve here? Jenna, is Genevieve here? And Angie's not here? Not yet.
Hey guys, sorry, my I don't have my speakers. This is relevant to yesterday. I'll play it until literally the first person starts talking, and then it'll be ruined. It's it's not like amazing or anything. It's very quiet, but it's relevant to what we were talking about. Stop talking. I don't think it really is spoilers. What? Dude, move. You've never sat there. Yeah, yeah. You've never sat there, Landon. You're ruined. So there's like there's a clone of Vision. And they're gonna they're gonna talk but about you'll see. You are familiar with the thought experiment of ship of theses in the field of identity metaphysics. Ship of theses. The ship of theses is an artifact in the museum. Over time its planks of wood rot are replaced with new planks. Planks, not blanks. When no the original plank remains, is it still the ship of theses? Secondly, so that's like the first part of the question. The second part a little bit. And reassemble free of the rot. And is reassemble that the free of the rot. Like if you got rid of all of the rot. Uh, both of the two ships. Neither is the two ship both. Well, then we are agreed. But I do not have the mind stone. And I do not have one single ounce of original material. Perhaps the rot the is the point. The wear and tear of the voyages. The wood touched by it the It goes on and on, but they're just kind of extending the memories. They talk about it in terms of our robot. It is merely being kept from a weapon to be more easily controlled. I was kind of confused at this point, though. I'm sorry about it. Certainly, you are the true vision for you believe yourself to be. That was once the case. But upon meeting you, I have been disabused of that notion. As a carbon-based synthesoid, your memory storage is not so easily wiped. And it doesn't feel like a spoiler. I reject that. Because I think it, maybe it's a spoiler if you're like halfway through the show, but if you haven't watched the show at all, that means like nothing to you, so... Why am I doing the call? Oh, shoot. Okay. I just left the recording going through that whole transition. That's great. Okay. But anyway, because y'all were some of the better ones at discussing that yesterday.